Welcome to another episode of UEN PDTV. I'm Michael Hackerinen with the Professional Development Team, and we're at the Winter Sports School in Park City, Utah. We're gonna go inside and meet Tess Minor farah the principal of the school. We're also gonna meet some teachers and some students. We're gonna talk about growth mindset and what they're doing here to meet the needs of their unique winter athlete students who go to school for seven months of the year during the summer as well, and how they're making success with Canvas and other instructional technology tools. Let's go inside. Well, Tess, thank you for having us, uh, the UEN PD TV team up here to your winter sports school. You have a very unique uh, academic institution here because your school is flipped. Students are here in the summertime. True so that they can compete in their winter sports. Tell us a little bit about your school and your mission and how it all works. Sure, okay, we're in our uh, sixth year as a public charter school, but prior to that we had 20 years uh, as a private school and the, uh, the overall focus of the school was to provide students with the tools, the balance and the support they need to be successful in sport, but also in school um, and hopefully eventually in life. And the, the main premise is we have our students intense full days, five days a week for seven months um, to get all of their academics done so that they're free then to spend their entire winters training and competing with whatever sport clubs and coaches uh, work best for them to achieve their athletic goals. So just down the street in one direction, right. you have the Utah Olympic Park, which right. is becoming a winter sports training center. And in the other direction, we've got Soldier Hollow. And you're also not far from the Olympic Oval where speed skaters are training. So just conversationally, tell me what percentage of your athletes come from which sports? Um, I'd say about half of our students are in one of the skiing disciplines. Okay, Alpine Nordic or Alpine? Or both? Alpine and free skiing mm -hmm. particularly. So freestyle skiing, moguls, aerials, um, all of those, you know, the free skiing disciplines, including big mountain skiing. And then we've got speed skaters, we've got some ski jumpers, um, we've got uh, uh, Nordic skiers uh, as well, and um, a few others in even smaller sports. So it, it sounds like you have a pretty interesting culture up here with students who have a different schedule, but to have an entire student body made up of competitive athletes, they probably come with a different mindset than most students. What are some ways that your school culture has changed to meet the needs of your students? Well, I shouldn't say that it hasn't necessarily changed, but what we've done differently to mm -hmm. be able to meet the needs of our students is we recognize that our students come in already pretty driven um, highly motivated to be able to do what they have to do here so that they can do what they want to do out there uh, um, all winter long. And so what we've uh, tried to do is to put together um, a staff that understands what they're trying to do, um, tools that help support them uh, in what they need to do here so that they can get out on, on the mountain and enjoy, um, and with as much flexibility in uh, individual, individualized programming as we can for them. So, uh, because even though they're here with us for seven months studying, they're also training year round, and so they're missing school during our school uh, year in addition to the time that they already have off in the winter. So we've got to figure out how to juggle meeting the needs of kids who are here on campus five days a week and kids who might be here for three weeks and then gone for another two, um, and then kids who have to miss uh, every morning for two hours uh, for specialized training for a month in the summer. So what kind of tools have you put in place to ensure student success when they're only here for seven months and they're traveling all around? We're trying to take advantage of all the digital tools that are available and uh, fundamentally making a, a switch to have all of our students and faculty on Canvas uh, in, during last school year has absolutely changed the way we interact with students so that we have the ability to stay connected with them wherever they are, Argentina, Chile, um, New Zealand, wherever they're going, um, but also so that they can interact with their teachers and peers, um, whether they're here on campus or away. So that's a big challenge just for staff to suddenly shift and be using an online learning management system, putting all of your content and, and getting student content turned in as well. What have you done to ensure that your teachers are successful and your staff can use 
those new tools. In, in addition to our, uh, um, our regular school year and weekly faculty meetings, we schedule meetings during the winter to be able to uh, plan for the upcoming school year and we've absolutely focused those on figuring out how to take um, the core curriculum and the uh, uh, instructional strategies that we see work uh, well for our students and figure out how to translate those to the online platform in Canvas. So we've got a, um, a school-wide, staff-wide PLC course that um, I actually run on Canvas so to, to give the teachers the experience of being students in a Canvas classroom in, uh, in addition to planning for their own Canvas classrooms. And you had success with that, kind of like a catch. So once your staff was in Canvas learning as students, they started to see the applications that they could use with their own learners. Absolutely, right. Figuring out um, how, how to leverage those tools in a way that actually um, reduces the amount of work fundamentally that they can do um, and free up more time for the uh, relationship building in the classroom, for the one-on-one, -on -one, um, and the, the opportunity to uh, customize and individualize um, so that students who are, aren't always doing the same thing at the same time uh, even if they are in the classroom together. Sounds great. Could we talk to some of your teachers and hear about some of their successes? Absolutely. So now we're outside. We're talking with Derek Bunting and you are both a teacher and a coach for teachers. Tell us a little bit about what you do here at the Winter Sports School. I'm a part-time English teacher. I teach freshman English and senior English and I'm also the director of curriculum and instruction which means when I'm not teaching my own classes I'm sitting in on other teachers classes uh, observing what they do and then talking with them afterwards uh, about the instructional strategies they used, uh, the curricular approaches that they've had and, uh, and uh, how we're trying as a school to align our curriculum uh, both uh, scope and sequence and that's one of our accreditation goals for uh, the next cycle. Your students have unique requirements. They're traveling. Sometimes their sport demands more of their attention and focus than their academics. What kind of tools do you use here to meet their needs? Well, uh, we use Canvas extensively so that uh, when a kid is missing um, uh, a segment of, of, of our class, and it might be as, as much as three weeks. We have a, mm. I have a girl in my uh, senior English class right now who's gonna be in Argentina for the next three weeks. So uh, they check Canvas religiously, uh, and all my assignments will be there. The daily agenda will be there. Uh, when she's writing revisions of her essay, she will email them to me. I'll make my comments on them, uh, scan it, email it back to her. Uh, so we're in constant communication. So they, they miss the daily discussions, they miss the daily lessons, but anything that is uh, on paper, um, as far as assignments are concerned, uh, they don't miss a beat as far as that's concerned. So we've come upstairs to classroom seven to meet Rosie Panic, who teaches Spanish and, and history. And history. Yeah. A lot of you guys have dual roles, like you teach multiple. Yeah, classes. it's unusual. Yeah, that's the only way you can teach um, the full school year here, is if you do multiple subjects. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. You get to see the kids in totally different elements. You know, I mean, you get some kids who really excel in one subject and, and struggle in another and, and it's a good way to remind yourself that it's not necessarily the kid you know mm -hmm. that they're not maybe that student in every class they can be a different student in different classes interesting yeah. so you have these really unique students because they're athletes and what are some of the tools that you use to meet their learning styles their needs with the shortened school year and going on trips for weeks at a time what do you do yeah well so that is a huge challenge for us you know and before um, before canvas we had tried other methods having teacher blogs to have all of our assignments posted and um, you know somewhere that students could be checking the book page numbers or things like that right um, and we'd also used some other platforms, but you know, Canvas really does allow us to um, not only post what we're doing on a daily basis, but post a lot of that stuff ahead of time, make that content available to them while they're gone, or you know, if they um, aren't able to keep up every day, you know, they have slow internet, or um, you know, they're training all day one day and have a few more hours the next day they can access that, that information when they need to. The really fun things that I can do on Canvas that I didn't do before are things like the, um, the video charlists, I call them. So they're video conversations. And I do this as a replacement for the oral exams. You know, back 
in the old days. I would sit students down two at a time. You know, they'd be at desks like this, I'm sitting over here, and they have to go through this conversation together, and it's this high stress, mm -hmm. you know, kind of environment, and they're showing me that they know how to have these conversations. Now I let them do videos. That's so transformative because you're doing something that before that technology existed couldn't happen. Right. And now you've got them. Yeah, and it helps with classroom management too. I mean, in the past, you know, I'd have be doing that with two students at a time. What are the other kids doing? Right. You know, they're just, I'd keep them in here and there's just like chaos going on in the classroom, right? And then I'm out in the hall <laughs> with these two at a time and then thinking it's like, shh, quiet down, you know? Yeah, but now you've got everybody engaged at the exactly. same time. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Rosie, this is all really good insights on how you're leveraging the tools and meeting the needs of your students. Would you mind if we go and meet some of them? Oh, of course not. Yeah, that'd be fun. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. My name is Zane Severson. I am 17 years old from Park City, Utah. I'm a 12th grader here at the Winter Sports School, and I compete in the sport of slope style skiing. Everyone at this school is very driven in some sense just because of the you know, athletic background and I think the teachers see that and with missing a lot of school and stuff, even in the summer for going on like training camps, they really help a lot to like, if you are behind or if you need like one-on-one -on -one time, since it is a smaller school, like being able to have like individual time with your teachers is like, I think the most helpful part of this school. We also have a shorter school period, so like we go to school for seven months other than nine months and that puts a lot more you know curriculum into a short amount of time and so that I think just shows the endurance and that you know our the students here all can work hard and the teachers know that you know so they they can provide help in order to get us through this short you know short amount of time same amount of school. My name is Chloe Robinson I'm a slope style skier and I'm in 12th grade at the winter sports school. Our class sizes are really small. We have 30 kids in a grade, and so it's pretty one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Alex Berlock is definitely like my favorite teacher. He um, really helps and cares about his students, and um, really works one-on-one -on -one with you and cares about like the grades you get. If he can tell you're struggling, he comes over to you and is like, "Okay, let me help you out with this." Or on tests, he kind of gives you some help with that as well. Hi, my name is Sam Masuga. I'm a Nordic ski jumper, and I was part of the class of 2018. As a graduate, uh, the thing I liked most about winter school is I really liked how it was a, like it's such a tight community and even though like it's really hard to accommodate everybody and we all have our own schedules, I felt like all the teachers and everybody was really working together because you're a really small class of only 30 people. So it's, it's like a really unique education because everybody can be super flexible with you. We're not constrained by really very many things. Um, in my years at the winter school, we've actually had a lot of different tools, even just, I was only here for three years, but it changed every single year, just trying to be better and better at accommodating. So we used to have like Google Classroom where you could post all your assignments and you could talk to your teachers through that. Now we have Canvas, which is like that, but just taking it a little bit further. And you can see everything and teachers can talk to you through there. And it's just, um, even teachers will be willing to email. Um, I think everybody's just really flexible with everything and using every tool available to them. There's nothing really specific, like everybody's really open to trying anything new. They'll work with whatever you have. Um, at the school, I definitely find a culture of growth mindset because while we, uh, people seem to think that we're only trying to do our best on the hill, it translates into every part of life. So just as an athlete, you've grown up like wanting to do the best and you can in everything. So when we're at school, everybody's really pushing to be the best they can be and all the teachers want us to excel. So I think it's just everybody pushing each other like to be better and better. Tess, we've had a wonderful time visiting your school. It's an excellent place that demands excellence of its students. And you have some really fantastic teachers. You've done a lot of hard work with Canvas and other digital instructional technology tools to meet the needs of your students. Um, thank you for having us here. It's been a pleasure Thanks working with you. Thanks for watching this episode of UEN PD TV. Hope you got some good ideas for your school for using Canvas and your school's culture. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more ideas for more of our videos. And we hope to see you next time. Now I'm gonna go skiing. See you around. Oh wait, it's summer.